Hi guys, this is Ravenclaw What If. Welcome back to another What If story. Now, before we begin, uh, if this video gets 100 likes, then I'll immediately start on the next part. If not, then I'll switch over to one of my other two series I'm going to do, switch between each other. So, once I go through it, like, at least one for each one, then I'll be switching back to this one if, if the light goal doesn't get met. The light goes, the light goal is the main thing I use to, to see if you guys enjoy the what if. If not, then I need to find a way to improve it. So that's why I made a light goal for this series. I normally don't do that for my what ifs. I mean, I'll, I'll occasionally throw in a light goal, but this one's going to be, uh, the whole series is going to be a light goal. Right, let's get into this what if. I've already wasted almost a minute of, of your guys' time. Izuku woke up from the glare from from the sun from his window. He heard a faint he heard faint talking from downstairs. Izuku just got up so he doesn't recognize the second voice. All he knows the second voice is female. After waking up a little bit, he finally recognized the second voice. He is hoping he is wrong. When he finally got dressed into his school uniform and walked downstairs, he see he sees his mother his, his sorry his mom talking with Amber downstairs in the kitchen. You're finally up, Foxy. What are you doing here? You wound me. I came all this way to pick you up. Good morning, son. I do enjoy the banner, but I have to get to work. You have a good day at school, dear. It's always good to see you, Amber. Same here. I'll take care of Foxy here. Izuku watches his mom leave the house and go to her go to her job or her vacation is finally over. Come on, Foxy. We're going to be late if we don't leave now. Don't give me that look. Didn't I tell you last night you would see me tomorrow? And here I am. As they both walk out of the house, he sees a motorcycle in the driveway. Foxy, meet baby. Baby, meet Foxy. This is my pride and joy. I finally got it out of the shop. Get on. I don't bite, unless you want me to. Izuku is reluctant to get onto the motorcycle. He knows that if he refused, she would probably get pissed off. He doesn't he doesn't really want to deal with the angry redhead. Especially yeah. Let's continue. So he sat right behind her as she told him to hold on tight as he wrapped around his arms around her waist so he doesn't fall off. As Amber peeled off to make her way to school driving her motorcycle. Brace yourself, Foxy. It seems like we got some unwanted admirers. As she goes full throttle, driving through several alleyways until she noticed they box her in as a big big black van stop in front of the alleyway, stopping from them going any further as she skid her tires, sliding Sorry, sliding the motorcycle barely, um, I lost track where I was. Barely missing several trash cans that there were on the side of the alleyway. As she finally skids in a stop, a foot away from the, from, uh, from the van. Well, Foxy, it looks like we're boxed in. Don't, don't worry your pretty little head. I won't let these punks... Heard a, hair, heard a hair on your head, on your pretty little head, basically. This won't take long. As the other van blocks the other side of the alleyway, preventing them from escaping on either side. Siku saw several street punks pile out of the two vans, holding chains, bat, and a couple switchblades. By the, by the way they're looking at Amber, she must know them. Izuku watches with curiosity. Don't make it harder than it should be, Amber. The boss wants you back. You belong to him. 
I don't belong to anyone. You could tell that dipshit. I have no interest in him anymore. I tossed him to the curve for a reason. I won't associate with criminals. I broke ties with that bastard for for that reason. I I have goals I want to achieve. And I'm not going to let you bastards drag me down. It doesn't matter what you want. You belong to the boss. You're his girl. Nothing will change that. You simply need to shut up and obey. Boys, get her. And kill the freak. The moment they referred Izuku as a freak, she was furious as fire erupted from her fist. That she, uh, then she rushed towards and threw out a punch as several of the thugs get thrown back, hitting the vans, or hitting the van, making a dent on the metal. The moment they made contact with the metal, basically. As she throws out several kicks as fire begins to shoot out of her, shoot out of her legs, burning several of the, several of the street punks. That sh then she got, she got nice and close and started brutally, brutally taking them down. Any weak points. Then dismodeling them or dismodeled them. Izuku got off the motorcycle and leaned against the wall to watch the fight until three of the street punks approach, approach him, wielding metal chains in, in their hands. He noticed the three of them are approaching him. That's a bit unfair, gentlemen. The three of us is enough to handle you, freak. Well, you got me all wrong, gentlemen. It's unfair to you. You should have brought more of your friends. The three of you won't give me a proper challenge. You're surely going to need it. No matter. I haven't had a good fight in ages. So, I guess I'll allow you to entertain me. Well, your move, boys. Izuku's eyes has been closed the whole time. As he had a smile on his face. The moment he swung his chain at Izuku, the smiling Kitsune grabbed, grabbed the oh sorry, firm grip around the man's chain and wrapped around his hand and arm and pulled him towards him, striking the man with a palm strike when he got into, into striking range. Izuku unwrapped the chain and, around his arm and tossed it casually to the side as he doesn't oh sorry let's try it again like he doesn't have a care in the world the palm strike was so hard he fell unconscious before he hit the ground oh sorry oh my you said watch out really said watch where you're going that looks like a nasty fall as Izuku simply opened up his eyes, by the looks of it, the two, the, sorry, give me a second here. By the looks of it, the two remaining thugs seemed to be extremely pissed off by, by the constant smirk on Izuku's face. The two, the, the two street punks threw caution to the wind. And both charge Izuku as he ducked under the criminal or the metal chain that was about to hit his about to hit in the side of his head. And grabbed the other thug by the wrist and threw him against the brick wall, making the man's cough well, making the man cough up blood from the impact. The three punk helped his fellow up as they both look at each other and nod. As they pull out switchblades, discarding their their metal chains, Izuku and the street punks immediately felt a strong aura as they both turned to see Amber, as she simply whispered "Phoenix Drive," as she disappeared and reappeared in the middle of the group of street punks, as all 
as all of them fall to the ground unconscious, with several marks all around their bodies like they were struck by several well-placed strikes. As Ember starts to walk towards Izuku immediately, with an extremely pissed off expression on her face. It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. I suggest you run. The redhead seems to be pretty cross with you. Before they could even move, Amber disappeared and reappeared in front of them, and kneed one of them in the stomach, then landed a vicious palm strike across his face as he goes, goes flying, smashing into the van on the far end of the alleyway. The white-haired Kitsune has noticed a slightly red aura around her. He can see, well, he can see sparks, fi uh, sparks of fire em em emanating from her knuckles. Before he could react to his friend flying towards the van, she grabbed him by the skull and lifted him up in the air. I was having a good day. You worthless piece of trash. If you ever, I mean, ever refer to him as a freak. Let's just say I might lose control of my strength. Tell that son of a bitch I want nothing to do with him. Stop looking for me. Now, if you might excuse me, I have a cute little fox to spend time with. As she slams him into the ground, leaving a small crater from the impact as crack starts to form onto the cement. From the peer pressure that was placed onto the ground. As she puts her hands in her pocket and closes her eyes and starts to breathe in and out to, to try, try to calm herself. A second later, she reopened her eyes and simply smiled at Izuku. Well, I no longer want to go to school now. Let's play hooky. Come on, Foxy. Let's have some fun. As she grabs onto his hand, as she as she leads him, let's try it again. She grabbed onto his, his hand as they both begin to walk to the motorcycle. As they both get on, on onto it and drove off. Amber moves the van that's blocking their path by simply giving it a nice little kick. To move the vehicle to the side. Very forcefully. Emanating fire from, from that kick. As she stops the vehicle from driving. As they're parked in front of a diner. As they went in, as they went in to, to basically eat. As they both sit down in the back of the stall. Basically, their stall is in that the far end of the room. I gotta say, Foxy, you're not too shabby in the fight. I was quite impressed by your performance as well. Well, I'm a, I'm always looking for an opportunity to impress you. But seriously, I'm sorry for dragging you into this. My ex doesn't take re rejection very well. Long story short, he started to walk down a path, a dark path, and I won't be involved in, in such things. He, he always was immature. That's one of the reasons why I'd cut ties with him. What about you? Do you have any crazy exes? No, you're the first person to ever show me interest, I interest in me. In that way. I'll be damned, it's quite surprising. You're quite attractive. I figured out you would have a whole line of girls trying to get close to you. I was homeschooled my entire life. This is the first time I've ever actually been to one. Sorry to hear that. That's a shame, really. And I'm sorry for what they called you. What do you mean? That they called you a freak. You're far from it. I hate people like that, judging people by their appearance. Did they now? Well, I never really paid attention to, to them, really. You don't need to worry. 
it will take a lot more than one of them to simply offend me. Well, I'm glad. Amber got a text from her phone from Momo. She briefly read the message and put the phone back in her pocket. Well, it looks like we're in the clear. What do you mean? Well, apparently, they shut down the school for today. Something about a villain attack in front of the school, and they sent everyone home. Now that, now that we clearly won't get in, in any trouble for ditching. So my plan hasn't changed. I'll be spending the whole day with you, Foxy. After the two of them get done with their food, they left the diner to have, have some fun at several different arcades all around, around in that district or whatever, you know, what they're called. The entertainment district. As Izuku got cream at every game he played against Amber by distracting him, by purposely showing a little bit of cle a cleavage to distract him. As they both walk out of the arcade, you did that on purpose. I have no idea what you mean, Foxy. Come on, I'll drag you home. It's getting kind of late. After, uh, uh, after Amber drive Izuku back to his house, well, I got to admit, Amber, I had fun today. As he kissed her on the forehead, well, I'll see you tomorrow. After all, we still have that date you're so keen on. Well, aren't you, aren't you the bold one? I'm looking forward to it. Then tomorrow, then. I'll call you, I'll call you when I get up. As he you watches Amber drive off, as he walks away from his house in the opposite direction, I think it's time to deal with those loose ends. I think it's time I officially meet her ex and remove him permanently. By how she talks about him, he's the type not to give up. Now, where should I find this human? I could always follow the scent to one of the one of his goons. Ah, there you are. As Jizuku caught a scent on one of the punks that fought him earlier earlier today, he began tracking him. As Jizuku tr tracked him, well, give me a second. As he finally found their main location, he decided to give his mom a call. Show so she doesn't worry. Hey, mom. Oh. Are you alright, Suhart? I heard what happened at the school. You're, you're not injured at all. No, I'm fine, Mom. We ran into some traffic. They shut down the school down before I got there. Oh, thank God. Where are you right now? I'm just taking a night stroll. I'll be back home in a little bit later. I just wanted to inform you so you don't get worried. Okay, dear. Be careful. Don't stay out too late. I'm still at the, I'm, I'm still at the lab. So how's work been going, Mom? Frustrating. I'm still having a hard time finishing my project, but at least I made some leeway. I just wanted to let you know. Like, oh, sorry. I just want to let you know I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Oh, I'll, I'll let you get back to work. When you get back home, have one of the staff cook you dinner. I probably won't be home un until late. At the latest, uh, at the latest, I'll probably be home around six o'clock in the morning. I most likely will have to pull an all nighter tonight. Just don't work yourself too hard. Take breaks, mom. Don't worry, sweetheart. I, I will. I'll probably see you in the morning. Good night, mom. Night, sweetheart. Is it good to disconnect his phone with his mother? As he got, as he turned around, as he's in the bad part of town. So this is where the, my prey is hiding. It's been a good, it's, what the hell, I need to, give me a second, guys. Okay, now I understand it. I've been a good little fox. 
for years now, so I don't think the rest of the kids in the age would mind if I got rid of a few bad apples. I'm actually all giddy. He walks up to the old building that most likely was abandoned before they took it over. That they've been using for their main base of operation. Izuku can smell all types of different kind of scents in in the building. Izuku shot out a bolt of electricity going through the two guards in front of uh, in front of the building. As the two men fall to the ground dead, electric electricity is sparking throughout their whole body from being electrocuted to to death. As Izuku steps over their corpse with his hands behind his back, walking casually. Immediately, immediately, when he entered the building, he used Foxfire to vaporize any humans that he came across, even giving, giving them the chance to warn the others. As he has his four tails out, for, for, oh, for our, ah, on display, He's on the verge of requiring his fist's tail. Each of his tail is a manifestation of his powers. The first tail, he's able to uh, use Foxfire. The second tail allow, gives him the power of electricity. And the third tail allows him to use gravity and manipulate it. And the fourth, and the fourth tail allows him... Oh, give me a second, guys. I screwed that up. That's his fourth tail. Final tail that he has right now is telekinesis. With the power of lightning, he's able to perform lightning magic. He's uncertain what his fist tail will grant him. The fist tail are not always the same powers with each. With each Kitsune, it's it 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 differs be uh between fox to fox. His bloodline are, are known to be masters of the ele ele elemental magic. Well, well, what do we have here? So many of you here. Oh, I'm one lucky fox. As he steps into the main room, Izuku sees the leader of this street punk gang wearing no shirt but a leather jacket. And leather pants with combat boots, with long black hair, with green eyes. How did you get in here, freak? Where's my men? Mostly dead. Giving a nonchalant shrug. Well, at least the ones I saw. Do you mean they're dead? Killed them, of course, you silly human. Jen's a little unnerved. Whoever this is, his smile creeps his, creeps him out. Smile never left his, left his face. That's the, that's the guy we were talking about. So you're the son of a bitch that stole my amber from me. You humans are so petty. I'm sorry, give me a second here, guys. No, I didn't steal her from you. She was never yours to begin with. As much as I hate to admit it, I quite enjoy her company, even though I find her annoying. It's quite unnerving how, how I got accustomed to her company. Nevertheless, you've been causing trouble. You've, ca you've been causing Amber a bit of trouble, so I'm here to remove it. So I can neutralize a possible threat. I don't do competitions, especially with a human. Now, gentlemen... Who wants to die first? Don't all come out all at once now. If you die too fast, I'll get bored. Try to keep me entertained. I want that freak dead. Izuku has a very disturbing smile on his face. Half of his goons rush towards Izuku as... As a blue fireball manifests out of nowhere, 
beginning to flow in the in in midair, like it's dancing. When Izuku snapped his fingers, the fireball, or the fox fireball, shot towards them. In in incredible speed, vaporizing them, leaving no trace behind. Well, who's the next? Just don't sit there and gawk at him, at the freak. I want him. I want his head. I want his severed head in front of me in the next five minutes, or I'll kill you all myself. All of the street punks, except the leader, was forced to the ground by by the gravity being in, increased over them. What's the matter, humans? Can't stand the pressure? Izuku slightly increased the gravity every 10 seconds until all their eyeballs pop from their socket, crushing them, th th then slowly crushing them, then finally killing them. That was oddly satisfying. Were we? Before we got rudely interrupted. My human friend. What are you? No one has that many corks. I've been in the underworld for a while. I've seen many things. I've never once seen a filthy mutation cork like yours. In the way you use your powers. There's no way those are corks. You might be a freak. But you're too precise. Precise in your attacks. One person I only one person I know that get able to give out corks. And he would never associate with someone like you. It's an interesting bit of in, in some information. I gotta admit, my opinion of you has changed a little bit. You're one smart human. I'll tell you what I am before I kill you. Or, I think I'll rather show you. As he has a very disturbing fox grin on his face. After all, I am quite hungry. As he shifts into his fox form in, in his full size. As, as Jen sees a white fox, oh sorry, white fox overshadowing him. With four tails waving around, for and uh, and it's some what display motion. Jen falls back on the ground in pure fear. Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Izuku, and I'm a kitsune. And you, my human friend, are going to be a nice snack. A humongous white fox lunge at the human as blood begins to splatter everywhere as you see the shadow of the fox pull out Jin's heart as he has it between his two um, claws as he drops it down into his mouth as he chomps down devouring it Izuku after Give me a second here. Turn his attention to the rest of the body and, and begins to devour him. After he was done with his meal, Izuku easily shifts back into his human form as he takes a napkin from his pocket and wipes the blood off from the side of his mouth. Simply delicious. I haven't ate I haven't ate a human in in such a long time. It was always my favorite delicacy. Well, I suppose I should get home. Mother would be worried. If she gets home before I do, she would get extremely worried. Thank you for inviting me over for dinner, gentlemen. Please, don't get up. I'll let myself out. You do have a lovely home. Izuku made his way home without no trouble. Went to, went to bed with a smile on his face. Totally satisfied with his little playtime he had with the humans. When he woke up, he saw his mom pass out on the couch as he picked her up and took her to her room after tucking her in and gently shutting the door shut. After talking with Amber on the phone for a little bit, 
during the morning, he decided to make some lunch and his mother, for his mother. Inga was woken up by the smell of food cooking. As she was shocked to see Izuku is the one cooking in the kitchen. Hi mom. As he has a smile on his face. That took her by surprise. He, re he rarely smiles like that and she knows that. Who are you? What did you do to my son? Funny mom. May I ask why you're such in a good mood today? Nothing really. I just really enjoyed my walk last night. It was... It was enlightening. I totally butchered that, but anyways, let's continue. Here, Mom, you should really eat. So, do you have plans today, sweetheart? I'm just going to hang out around the house for a few hours. Then I'm going uh, to need to get ready for that date thing. With, uh, with Amber. You seem to be almost happy about it. After giving it, after giving it some thought, I've never been on one of these dates before, so it would be an interesting experience. And I don't really dislike Amber and her company, even though she likes to tease me quite a lot. Maybe the girl's growing on me. I really don't know what happened on your walk, but I'm glad you. I'm glad to see you in such a happy mood. So, where are you taking her? I was hoping to talk to you about that. I was hoping you would have any suggestions. You came to the perfect woman. Only thing I can suggest is probably take her to a nice restaurant. I could tell she's not your average girl, so you're going to have to get creative. I suppose maybe I'll get a hold of her cousin. She might have some ideas. You're a smart lad. I have no doubt you'll figure it out. I'm gonna eat the lunch you made me. Then I'ma go go then I'ma go head back to the lab and try to get some more work done. And I want to thank you for bringing me into my room last night. You've you've always you've always been a good son. You always managed to put me in back of my bed once I fell asleep. In the living room. You're not that shabby of a mother yourself. I know that grin. You're far too mischievous for your own good. But thank you for the food. No problem, Mom. As he walked off to his room to try to get in contact with Momo through the computer. Through the student website. They put that in place for the other students to chat with each other. Izuku was in luck. Momo was online. He sent he sent Momo a few messages. Well, a message. Hey, Momo. This is uh, this is Izuku. I don't really know your cousin very well, so I needed your advice on this date. I'm supposed I'm I'm supposed to take her tonight. It didn't really take Momo long to reply back. I'm actually glad you contacted me, Izuku. You don't really talk much in class. Really to anyone outside of my cousin. So, what type of advice do you need? If I said I don't really know her very well, I have no idea what she likes to do, to do outside or... Outside, sir. What she likes outside of taking her to a restaurant. I'm kind of lost. This uh, this kind of thing is... So oh, sorry. Give me a second here. I'm kind of lost in this situation. This is the first time I've been in... I've been put in this situation. So I don't know what the proper protocol is. My cousin's not that... Not that hard to get to know. She likes the fighting as much as I try to protest. She's really into motorcycles. And she has a weakness for festivals. Speaking of festivals... There's one coming up tonight. I suggest you take her to that. I think she would ha would quite enjoy it. And she also has a and sorry, she also has a weakness f for going to the zoo. Despite my cousin's tough girl act, 
she has a weakness for cute animals. Oh, and I, and, sorry, give me a second, I put it up. Before I forget, she also likes beaches, especially at night. She finds, uh, she finds, um, she finds the waves relaxing. I can work with that. Thanks, Mama. No problem, Izuku. I'm glad to help you. I hope you two hit it off. You really make my cousin happy. I've seen her date several guys, but you're the only one that 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 make her smile in that way. I know my cousin teases you a lot, but she but she truly likes you. You have my guarantee on that. I would love to sit here and chat with you some more, but I have to get back to the studying. Thanks for the help. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you on Monday. See you on Monday. As as we cut to a group of female kitsune on top of a house wearing white kimonos with white foxes fox masks, wearing some sort of sh short katana, place sideways on on their lower backs. Finally found you, brother. You know our order, sisters. We strike tonight. As all the female kitsune, uh, female kitsune's body, as they all body flicker, disappear from on top of the roof like they weren't even there, leaving no trace behind. Because that's probably where we're going to cut it. Hope you guys have a good night and day. Judge my time zones, and I'll catch you in the next video.